Welcome. Thank you for joining me, Greyboard Gamer, here with a playthrough of Infection, Humanity's Last Gasp from Victory Point Games. Let's get this box open and get it set up. First thing we're going to place down is the game board, and it's one of the puzzle style boards, so it fits into the box easily. And we're going to be playing on this side, which is the bacterial side. A harder version on the back, you can see the red around the border, would be the viral side. But this playthrough, we're going to stay on the easier of the two and play on the bacterial side. The first token we'll place is the death toll marker. And it'll go in the very first spot, and you can see that it says three to six underneath it. And that's what we have to roll to successfully contain the bacteria in the containment phase and depending on what stage we're in it gets more and more difficult. We start out here at one and you can also see that there is a a note for two dollars. We'll get two dollars in funding when the uh, income phase comes as long as we're in this initial stage of stage one which is these first three blocks Stage two is four through six, and then pandemic, seven through nine. And then finally, if we end up on the skull, we have lost. Next, we have our funding token, and we'll start with it on this side, because we're going to start the game with 15 in funding. So we have it on the 10 side and put it on the five space to give us $15 to start out. Next, we're going to create the molecule pool, and that's what all of these tokens are here with the different letters on them. And for the bacterial version of the game, you remove N and then M and O from the game. So those three are not part of this game. And now we're going to build our initial bacteria that we're going to deal with. It's going to mutate and change a lot during the game, but this is our starting point. We're going to draw tokens from the molecule pool at random and place the first one here in the middle on the six space, which is A1. Then we'll move on to B1 and then we'll work our way all the way around to B6. So all of these seven spaces will make our initial bacteria. So I'll give these a good mix. Turn my head. And H will go in A1. Then we'll draw six more to populate the B ring. L. Well, we're drawing really difficult ones to start out with. G, also one of the harder ones. Anything G and above in lettering is more difficult. So we're starting off rough. E, a little bit easier. J. Once again, a difficult one to deal with. A, much easier. And then finally, a B. So we have A, B, and E, which are a little bit easier, or the easiest ones to deal with. Uh, J, G, H, L, L's the hardest. We have two sets of special events tokens, six each, six bad, which are represented by the red, six good, which are represented by the blue. We're going to randomly draw two from each group. So I'll just grab two without looking, and they'll go into the pool. The remaining four from each group are out of the game. And now we'll draw two of the bad ones. Place them in the pool and then these are out of the game also. We'll give these a good mix so those new tokens are thoroughly incorporated. We'll place this off to the side for our molecule draw pile. 
Next, we're going to take our status report deck. You can see there's several status report cards. Give this a nice, good shuffle. Mix them up real good. Then we'll place this off to the side to create our draw pile for our status report cards. We'll place them up here. Next, we're going to take another cup and put all of the square protein tokens in there. And these are what we do to target the different molecules on the bacteria. We'll use these. And you can see they have a number on them. Like this green circle has a three, this orange star has a four, and so on. That number means there's that many of that particular one in here. So there's three green circles, four orange stars, and then some are more rare and some are more abundant. So we're going to put them all in this cup, then we're going to draw one at a time and populate these four squares. This is our incubator where we're going to draw from and purchase from. We'll start here at the zero, then we'll add one to the one, to the two, and then the four. Those numbers, zero, one, two, four, are the cost it takes to purchase a protein from that location throughout the game. So we'll start by populating the zero, and we're going to have an orange star there. Next we'll have one of the, I call them blue donuts, and there's six of those. Those are the most abundant protein available. Next we will get another blue donut, and then finally in our fourth spot we will have ah, one of the more rare ones. There's only two of these purple stars, or donut stars. These will represent our protein pool. And we'll go ahead and make some room here so we can keep them in frame, at least partially. And then we will take our personnel and equipment cards. So it's either personnel or a kind of equipment. We're going to give these a good mix also. See if I can let that focus. Yes. We'll give these a good shuffle. And then we're going to draw five without looking right off the top. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. These five, we don't look at them, and we just place them off to the side, and they are out of the game. So we don't know which pieces of equipment or personnel we just got rid of. Then we'll take the rest of the deck for the draw pile and populate the equipment and personnel purchase area with three cards. First up, we have... Dr. Sylvia Goldstein, or Goldstein. She's an intern, so we only get these bonuses down here, and I'll explain what these are when they become available, if she's working with one of the other doctors, since she's an intern. So she has to be working with either Dr. Eugene Monroe or Dr. Robert Forrester, and it costs four to purchase the intern. And then here we have the electron microscope, Mark 1. We can draw a protein token from the protein pool. This will be an additional protein to harvest from the incubator at zero cost. It still counts towards your harvest limit. And normally you can only draw or harvest two proteins during a turn, but there are things that modify that, and that's what they mean by harvest limit. Now there are two of these cards in the game. Each piece of equipment has two cards. When you purchase the first unit, it costs you two of this particular one. And the second unit would cost you four. Now, if you only have one unit, you have to roll. And a four, five, or six means that it works properly. If you roll one, two, or three, it doesn't work. If you have both units of a particular piece of equipment, it automatically succeeds. And then, finally, we have a chemostat, Mark 1. Once per turn before harvesting, you may discard all available proteins in the incubator. 
and draw four new proteins from the cup. And this one also costs two and four for a second unit. And that would be if we had a bunch of proteins here that weren't very useful to us, but everything's useful in the beginning of the game. We can activate the chemostat, wipe all four of them out to a discard pile, and draw four new ones. There are additional tokens for the game, and these will come into play as we purchase personnel or uh, interns, so these tokens will become available. And when they do, I'll explain how those work. We are all set up and ready to go. There's also a six-sided die that comes with the game. I'm not going to use the one that comes with it. It was a really small die, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this sickly green double six whenever we have to roll a dice during the containment phase. Our goal here is to eradicate this bacteria. We want to get rid of every molecule off of this. Once we get rid of every molecule, we've won. There are several ways that you can lose the game, but we'll worry about those if we get close to losing. One I already mentioned is the death toll reaches the skull. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to target these molecules. So let me zoom in so I can explain how they get targeted. During my turn, I'm allowed to purchase two proteins. And there are times when you can purchase or obtain more, but initially you can only purchase two. And if I want to go after a particular molecule, for example, we do have an A in here. Here we can see the A molecule needs a green circle, a blue donut, and an orange star in order to complete it. If we are able to complete all three of those, and we're allowed to legally target the A molecule, which I'll go over in a moment, then we can take care of it, get funding for it, and eradicate that part of the bacteria. So for that A example, we needed a green circle, orange star, and blue donut. We could get a pretty good start here. We could purchase the orange star and the blue donut and put them on that A molecule, leaving us with only the green circle left. Still using A as an example, if we were able to obtain all three pieces of that molecule, then we could target it for eradication. In order to target, it has to have a minimum of three open sides. At the beginning of the game, everything has three open sides, except for H here in the middle, which is locked in with no open sides. There are times during the game where you can target things for eradication that have one or two open sides only, but the base rule is you have to have three open sides. At that time, I would be able to take A off. I would get paid for the funding under it if this was the very first time an A molecule or any particular molecule of a, of a single letter has been taken off. You get the funding for it. Then I'd be allowed to place A over here and show that it's been taken care of. It's been eradicated from that bacteria. Next time an A came up, if it did, on the bacteria, I could target it and get rid of it without having to build the proteins anymore because it's already been discovered once. But since it's already been discovered, I won't get funding for subsequent times that I target and destroy a particular molecule that's already been discovered. The game is set up and we're ready to begin. 